So today we're going to be talking about five of the best Vanguard ETFs right now to start your investment journey based on my research. These ETFs will give you exposure to economies all around the world so your portfolio can be fully diversified, not just in Australia, but globally as well. Because let's face it, Australia is quite a tiny market when compared globally. Hey guys, my name is Faisy and this channel is about finance and investing. Before we begin, this video is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. We're speaking in a very general sense only. I just have a passion for investing in finance, same as you. So let's get into it. So the first ETF on this list is VAS, which is Vanguard Australian Shares Index ETF. The great thing about this ETF is that it tracks the index, which is ASX 300. So it's quite diversified, more diversified than the ASX 200. So basically it holds all of the companies inside the ASX 200, plus an additional 100 companies that are small caps. Now, when we say that it's well diversified, we mean that this ETF covers roughly 90% of the Australian equities market. So if you buy into this, you're getting a pretty good picture of the Australian economy. Looking at the key facts for this ETF, the fund size is 7.45 billion. It's domiciled in Australia, which means that you don't need to complete the US tax form, which just makes our lives a bit easier when it comes to tax time. And the fund inception is basically how long the ETF has been running for, which is since May 2009, which is over two decades, so it's quite good to see. Now, the management fees for this ETF is 0.1% per year, which is still fairly low, but these fees aren't the lowest that I've seen. There's ETFs with fees out there for as little as 0.03% or 0.04%, but at the end of the day, it doesn't make too big of a difference because you're only paying about $10 per $10,000 invested for this vast ETF. So, looking at the holdings for this ETF, we can see that there's about 307 holdings right now. Looking at the sector allocation, we can see that 28% of the funds allocations are in financials because when it comes to the Australian economy, it's mostly dominated by big banks like the big four and some other banks as well. And then come materials at 21% because Australia is pretty big on mining. Now, as with nearly all ETFs, the reason why you would want to buy this is to buy and hold for the long term and see your investment rise up over time. And essentially, this ETF is giving you exposure to all of Australia's company, all of the big companies and most of the small ones. So it's a pretty decent option. ETF number two is VTS, which is Vanguard US Total Market Shares Index ETF. Now, the great thing about this ETF and why I think it's pretty unique is the fact that it tracks nearly 100% of the total of the US equities market. So once again, it's highly diversified to say the least. So if you do buy into this, you're getting a holistic picture of the American economy. Now, there's some other ETFs out there as well that are very similar to VTS like IVV or SPY and these two ETFs track the S&P 500 instead, but VTS is a lot more diversified. Now, if you guys want to check out IVV, I've done a whole video on that as well. There should be a link in description and there should be a pop-up on your screen as well. Looking at the key facts for this ETF, the fund size is $2.2 billion and is domiciled in the US. Now, this kind of sucks because you do need to complete a US tax form when it comes to tax time. And this can get a bit tricky, so you might want to do some extra research or speak with a tax accountant for professional advice to make your life easier. Now, looking at the fund in it has been running since 2009, which is over two decades, so it's quite good to see. And the management fees are the thing which really stand out to me because these are super low at 0.03% per year, which is in true Vanguard fashion because Vanguard likes to give access to people in a low cost fashion. So this is pretty good. And this is basically what Vanguard is all about. Now, looking at the number of holdings, we can see that they are over 3,500. And this is to be expected because this ETF is tracking nearly all of America's market. And looking at the sector allocation, it is mostly geared towards tech because tech is the highest at 26%. Then you have consumer discretionary at 16% and so on. And we can see that over one quarter of this ETF's allocations is based in tech because it's heavily dominated by giants like Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Tesla, Facebook, and so on. And when it comes to the weightings, we can see that Apple is the highest at 4.6%. Then we've got Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, and so on. So basically with this ETF, if you want to get diversified exposure to all of America's market, this could be a good option. Looking at ETF number two, which is VAE, 
This is the Vanguard FTSE Asia X Japan Shares Index Fund. Now you might not have heard about this one before, but I think it's pretty important, especially because the Asian markets are set to expand very quickly and China is expected to overtake the US economy when it comes to GDP by as early as 2028, as you guys can see by this article. So as investors, if we really want to diversify, I think this region is pretty important. Looking at some key facts for this ETF, the fund size is 328 million, which is isn't as big as the others. It's domiciled in Australia, which makes it pretty easy for us when it comes to tax purposes. The management fee is 0.4% which is a bit higher than the rest. However, this sector of the world may outperform the other economies in the short to medium term. So based on that line of thinking and that logic, it may be worth it to pay those fees so you can get that exposure and get that short to medium term growth. Now looking at the number of holdings for this ETF, it is quite huge at over 1400. And the sector allocation for this ETF looks to be mainly in technology and electronic focus. As we can see that consumer digital services is 11%. Then we've got semiconductors at 10% computer hardware, electronic components, and so on. And looking at the region exposure, we can see that most of the focus is on those emerging and growth economies to give us that allocation. Now, looking at the market allocation, we can see that a huge chunk of this is based in China, which is at 42%. And based on the previous stat that we looked at about the high growth in China, this ETF will give us that exposure. Now guys, I will note that this ETF does not include Japan whatsoever. As you guys can see, it's basically excluding it altogether. And this ETF focuses on other countries like Taiwan, Korea, India, and Singapore. So if you guys want to know some other good Asian ETFs that include Japan, I've already made a video about this and there should be a link in description and there should be a pop-up on your screen as well. Now looking at the top holdings for this ETF, we've got Taiwan Semiconductor at the top and they basically create semiconductors, of course, that actually supply to Apple as well, which I thought was pretty interesting. Then we've got Tencent, which owns WeChat, which is actually one of the largest social media networks, and it's quite huge in China. Then we've basically got Alibaba and Samsung, which basically don't need any introduction. And then we have Meituan, which is a shopping platform for dining, entertainment, travel related stuff and the company is over 10 years old now guys before we go on to the next etf if you are finding value so far please leave a like and subscribe it really helps out let's move on to the next etf which is vgs this is the vanguard index international shares etf this is also a pretty common etf and the great thing about this one is the fact that it gives you exposure to some of the largest companies around the world in developed economies excluding australia so we're talking north america and europe not just America on its own, like we've seen with other ETFs, which makes it a bit different to VTS, which is solely based in America. Now, looking at some key facts for this ETF, the fund size is 2.75 billion. It's Aussie domiciled, which means that you don't need to complete the tax form. And the management fee is 0.18%, which is less than half of the previous ETF that we looked at. Looking at the number of holdings, we can see that it's quite massive at over 1,500 and the sector allocation is still mostly geared towards IT at about 22%. This is the same trend that we saw in VTS ETF, but it's a lesser allocation. Financials is 13%, healthcare is 12.6 and so on. And looking at the region exposure, we can see that most of it is based in North America. However, we do have some other exposure to the Pacific and Europe and a tiny bit in the Middle East, which makes up the rest of the 30%. Now looking at the market allocation for this ETF, we can see that still mostly it is United States at 67%, but then we've got Japan at 8%, UK at 4.5%, France, Canada, Germany and a few other European countries as well. So it's giving us more exposure in the European area as well. So if you guys want to get exposure to Japan as well, the previous ETF that we looked at, which was VAE, that ETF had zero allocation to Japan. So this could be a good option to get that bit of exposure. And looking at the holdings for this ETF, we can see that the same names are here. You've got all the big tech stocks like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon. However, they do have lesser allocations but the top 15 holdings are still based in America. So guys, in a nutshell, if you want to get exposure to economies outside Australia that are not just the US, this ETF will give you exposure to America and Europe as well. Now, the last and final ETF on this list is VDHG. This is the Vanguard Diversified High Growth Index ETF. 
Now this ETF will give you loads of diversification right around the world, including Australia. So if you want to get fully diversified, buying just this one ETF will give you exposure to everything instead of you buying each of those ETFs that we mentioned earlier one by one. So let's look into the specifics for this ETF. We can see that the key facts are nearly $800 million in terms of fund size. It's domiciled in Australia, which makes it pretty easy when it comes to tax time once again. It's been running for three years and the management fee is 0.27% per year and you can get dividends quarterly. Now the main thing about this ETF and what makes it unique is the fact that they invest 90% into growth asset classes which we will look at in just a second and 10% in income classes for example bonds. Now one negative of this ETF is the fact that since the majority of the asset allocation is based in growth stocks which can be pretty volatile when a crash does happen or there's lots of volatility we can see some pretty rapid up and down movements in the price of this ETF. Now let's have a look at some of the allocation for this ETF and we can see that 36% of it is based in Australia which is a Vanguard Australian Shares Index Fund, 27% is international shares, 16% is international shares which are hedged, 7% is the bond index and then we've also got a small allocation in small companies and emerging markets to give us that extra exposure and to finish it off we've got 7% in the bond index fund and 3% in the fixed interest index fund. So you guys might see that a lot of these funds may sound familiar to what we've already spoken about in this video and that's because this one ETF invests in seven of these pre-existing funds which makes your job as an investor very easy because it's already highly diversified. So these are the five ETFs but let's talk about some other notable mentions of other Vanguard funds that I think that you guys should know about. Number one is VEU. This is the Vanguard All World XUS Shares Index. The management fee is 0.08% and the unique thing about this ETF is that it does not invest in the US. Instead, it invests in countries in Europe and Asia. As you guys can see, based on this allocation and the second ETF that we have, which is a runner up is VAP, which is the Vanguard Australian Property Securities Index ETF. And basically this ETF tracks the return of the ASX 300 REITs index. And this ETF gives out a quarterly distribution and you can see that it invests in diversified REITs at 32%. Then you've got retail REITs at 27%, industrial at 25, office at 11 and so on. Now, if you guys want to know about investing in Asia specifically, this video talks about the top four Asian ETFs that you can buy to diversify your portfolio. And this video talks about the worst ASX ETFs right now. All of these ETFs have negative returns and you can watch this video to get some investment ideas. Thanks for watching guys. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. So, so, so as investors,